folks. Today I'm going to do something that I haven't done in quite a while, a how-to video. Now, I've had a few people ask me how I do the white stripes on the driving wheels of my steam locomotives, so I thought I'd make a video about the full process of taking an undecorated black locomotive and turning it into a fully painted and lettered model. And the one we're going to do it on is my Bachmann Spectrum SY Class 2A2 Mikado. Now, this is actually a model of a specific real steam locomotive, Susquehanna number 142. 142's paint scheme has varied over the years, but usually includes some combination of white walls, white running board stripes, and a red cab roof. Now, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to letter mine as number 142, but I thought it would be cool to replicate the paint scheme anyway. The first thing I did was paint the roof, and I didn't film this part because I already made a how-to video about painting cab roofs last year. The only difference this time is that I used Vallejo spray paint instead of Tamiya so I didn't have to prime it. I really like Vallejo's hobby spray paint. One thing I will say is that I absolutely swear by Tamiya model masking tape. It works wonders for this sort of thing. It works so much better than regular blue painter's tape and is an absolute essential if you're going to be spray painting precise little parts like this. You can get it at any hobby shop. I think Vallejo makes a similar tape that works just as well. Next is the part you're all waiting to see, the white walls on the driving wheels. What I use is a white paint pen bought from a craft store. These are a bit finicky to work with, but I haven't found a better solution for white walls. I cut the end of the tip off of this one at a right angle, which makes it easier to apply precisely, and I highly recommend doing this. Lay the engine on its side, connect power leads to it, and run it at medium speed. Before using these paint pens, you have to shake them and then press the tip in until the paint starts to flow. You'll generally end up with too much paint on the tip, so wipe off just enough that there isn't a blob. Now, very carefully, apply paint to the very edge of the wheel, letting the spinning wheel distribute the paint evenly around its circumference. The line should be just as wide as the ridge around the edge of the wheel, and it should match between all of the wheels. It will take some trial and error to get this right the first time you do it. If paint gets on the wheel tread, you should be able to scrape it off while the wheel's still turning. If paint gets somewhere else it shouldn't be, such as on the face of the wheel, you should be able to wipe it off with a few drops of rubbing alcohol on a paper towel. Be careful not to do this too many times or you may start to wear through the black paint on the wheel, in which case you'll have to touch it up. stripe, I recommend leaving the engine alone for a while. This paint dries to the touch in a couple of minutes, but it'll stay very soft for several hours and you don't want to risk accidentally scraping it off. I left it to dry next to another unfinished project. Next, I added white walls to the leading, trailing, and tender wheels as well. There's no way to make these spin, obviously, so I just turn them by hand and do the lines manually. These wheels usually have a more distinct ridge around the rim, making this easier, although it still takes a steady hand. Again, try not to mess with it until the paint is fully cured. stripes to the running boards. Mask off anything nearby that you don't want paint to get on, like the cap. Run the paint pen along the edge very gently and be aware that it will want to slip and get paint all over the place. The trick here is not to let the paint creep onto the actual surface of the running boards. If necessary, like the wheels, you can wipe off excess paint or touch it up with black paint after it's dry. The next step is optional but highly recommended. This white paint stays fairly soft even after it's fully cured, and it will chip off over time, so I like to cover it with a clear acrylic varnish to help protect it. You don't even need a brush for this, just put a little bit of the varnish on a cotton swab, not too much, and run it gently along the stripes. This is much more forgiving than the paint pen, and if it gets anywhere it shouldn't, just wipe it off with a dry paper towel and try again. Let the varnish dry completely before you touch it. The final step is lettering the model. Now I haven't decided whether I want to permanently letter this as Susquehanna number 142, or if I want to letter it as a Westport and Shelter Cove engine. So for now, I'm going to make some temporary lettering for it using an electronic label maker. 
This is the one I use. It's a Brother P-Touch label maker, and it has all kinds of different options for different fonts, styles, and sizes of text. For this project, I'm using a gold on black label tape cartridge from ptouchdirect.com. This is a company that makes aftermarket tape cartridges for these labelers, and they have a much better selection and much better prices than Brother's own label cartridges, so I highly recommend them. Once I've figured out the right font size, I print out the label. I then use scissors to cut away the excess as closely around the lettering as possible. The idea here is to hide the edge of the label once it's on the model, since the label is much glossier than the surrounding paint, and clear coats won't stick to these labels. To apply them, what I usually do is peel off the backing, then stick it to a scrap piece and use that to position it on the model. This is easier to do with tweezers or needle-nose pliers than by hand. Now obviously these labels don't look quite as good as actual decals, but they can be easily removed without damaging the paint underneath, and they look good enough for most purposes. I'm going to leave them on this model until I decide what to do with it permanently. And that about wraps up this video. I've been using these techniques on locomotives for several years now, and I figured I was long overdue to make a video about it. At some point, I'll make one about making custom decals as well. For now, thanks for watching, and please enjoy this running footage of the finished model.